Hey everyone, it's Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Thanks for coming by to watch another video. You know, I've been thinking all week about doing another unboxing video from that storage unit I purchased. I had so much fun doing the first two videos with you and got so much awesome feedback from you. So uh, many of you have also been writing me, letting me know how much fun it was for you and that you want more of them. So. I have another box out there that I want to go through. I should actually say it's like a, it's more really like a tubby. That's the only thing I have that's in a plastic tub. So we're going to go out there. We're going to grab that one. We're going to bring it in. We're going to process it. Mrs. Primetime's already. Let me take you into the garage, kind of update you on the progress, show you what's going on out there. And um, also we'll go and uh, pick that tubby out. So let's head on over there and uh, bring stuff in. Okay, so just as a status update, you can see here I've been working through the DVDs. All these anime right here I have posted or am currently posting. And so I then moved them to a different area of Primetime Treasure Headquarters. Uh, these anime that I put to the side are ones that don't sell too well individually. That's uh, these here. Or they would have sold well, but they're like a part of a set and they're missing one. And so I'm just going to combine them together and put like a big mixed Japanese anime lot together. This is the box that we went through the other night. A lot of the big, thick Marvel Essential ones are out of here and posted already up for sale. And I'm just going through this bit by bit and eliminating some things. So as I look out amongst this whole palette of stuff that I still have and I'm trying to figure out what to go over and what to pull out and look through and I've got all this stuff over here. The one that intrigues me the most is the red bin because it's the biggest one and so curious what's in there and so uh, this is what we're going to go through. I've got Mrs. Primetime in there. She's going to help me out. So let's bring this inside and start processing it. All right so we've got it in here. Daisy is doing her inspection as usual. Uh, got a fire going nice and toasty. You could see this whole thing is just gross up top with this lid. So I just cannot wait to get rid of this tub. Just get everything out of here. And curious to see what is inside of here. So first up, it was so heavy. And ooh, oh, this is cool. This is Dungeons and Dragons stuff and looks like lots and lots of books and games and stuff. So I'm hoping a lot of this stuff is 1980s because like this right here, I could, always, I could already tell you it's going to be worth something. So I'm excited to start going through it. All right, so we're pulling these out bit by bit. Like this one right here, I looked up. This would go for a max of $30. Now, if it was new and sealed, it would go for $200. But uh, this is really cool. Just a nice old one from 1984. Uh, you know, again, I showed this the other night, but these are, as I said, these are usually really thin books. Uh, sometimes they are loose inside so that you can open it up and play with the maps and stuff inside. Um, sometimes you'll have a little name on it and that won't take the value down a ton. Even honestly, if there's scribbling and stuff and check marks in here, that will still be okay. But uh, this is exciting. These are um, you know, not easy to come by. Like here's another one right here. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons Dungeon Master rule book. So that's really cool to have the rule book. Um, you know, I'm gonna have to look these all up individually and see what these are currently going for. But this one here is from 1983. Uh, again, looks uh, looks nice inside. You know, there's no writing, there's no um, you know check marks or underlining or highlighting or anything like that. So uh, that's cool. Uh, I'm going to look this one up and get back to you a second on this one. Okay, so this one here is about a $25 book. And we're pulling out some hard covers here as well uh, from the 1970s. Like this monster manual right here. Uh, this turns out is, you know, probably around a $60 book. Now, I'll probably go for a little bit less because it does have some condition issues. The spine is a little bit loose. Hi, Daisy. Uh, and it's got a little bit of um, uh, mold inside of it, uh, only on the uh, blank pages of the book. Like inside, the actual uh, text of it is uh, fine. There's no issues there. So uh, this is a nice one. You know, the value is going to be uh, tied a lot to the edition. So you see here, this is the fourth edition from 1979. 
Uh, so, you know, the earlier the addition, the more it's going to be worth. I found these before. Uh, I found one at a garage sale that I sold for around $100. It was a different version of this. And uh, I remember I got it for a buck. I have it on video. It's on one of my haul videos. I got it for a buck and sold it for about 100 And then I, s I found another one at a church sale on the bottom shelf. And uh, every time I find these advanced Dungeons & Dragon books, the hardcovers, uh, you, you've got to pick them up. Uh, even if you got to pay, you know, five bucks for it, pick it up because you're going to make your money back. Uh, like this one uh, over here, uh, these could go for crazy value. Like there's a version of this one that has a misprint of the monster of a monster manual inside of it. They accidentally printed eight pages of the monster manual inside. Uh, and if you have that version of it. This book will easily sell for a thousand dollars or more. Easy. Uh, now this one doesn't have that. Uh, I already looked through it. Uh, you can see there's some wear on the side uh, here that will um, affect the uh, value a little bit. Um, Daisy is taking her quality control job way too seriously. <laughs> she really is. Uh, she just is not letting me film because she keeps attacking me. So hopefully I could get through this part right here and she could be focused on uh, inspecting this uh, red, the rest of this red toad over here. So real quick, let me show you this uh, Feast of the Goblins book. Now they don't all look like uh, books inside. Like this one over here, you know, this is along the lines of uh, what I was showing you earlier. You know, that they have uh, like a traditional uh, book look inside of it. And this one's a little crinkle, a little moisture exposure uh, on this one. But uh, over here, if you look at this one and you open it up, you're going to see that there's maps inside. And these maps are nice and colorful. Great thing here, there's no writing on the character sheet. And this is complete. Everything that's supposed to be here is here. This one will go for around $35 max. And so, uh, you know, that's good for a nice thin little book like this. And as I'm looking through these, uh, it doesn't make sense to lot these together. Uh, these, I'm just gonna piece them off individually. I mean, you could get 20 to 30 bucks a pop on these. I mean, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you counting Daisy? Eight, nine, ten. I mean, that could be like $200 right there. Um, we'll see. I mean, there's just so much money in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Mrs. Primetime was looking up uh, right now. If you go and you search for uh, Dungeons and Dragons listings, just type in Dungeons and Dragons and go to uh, one of the higher uh, priced. Uh, listings right now there is one on auction going for it's an old book it's right now up to eleven thousand dollars in bid price so crazy okay now sometimes what you'll find in addition to these books is you'll actually find box sets of games now this one here this uh menzo baranzin uh, i'm probably saying that wrong but anyway uh, this one here, if you open up now, it does have some box wear to it, but we still have the whole box, which is good. And inside, it looks to be complete from what I can tell. There's some wear to the books that are inside of here, but uh, looks like everything is here. Uh, this one here, I'm not sure. This one actually may not even belong in here. I'm going to have to figure that out. I mean, this looks like Forgotten Realms, which is another whole area of Dungeons and Dragons. So I think this one just kind of got snuck in here, but I'll sort all that out later. But assuming this is complete, which you know seems to have everything in here, this game right now is going for about 70 bucks. So, uh, and look at these maps. I mean, they are just, they're just, it looks like everything's here and uh, they're just pretty much look untouched and uh, you know, still nice and bright. I mean, these are gonna display really well in the pictures so i'm real happy to have all this here this is this is nice um selling these box sets are you know good money and this is why i was so uh quick to uh, when that person offered 450 for everything i mean there's 450 easily in all this dungeons and dragons stuff and this is just one tote and there's more than 450 here
All right, so there's some other ones here as well. Uh, this one here, a Torg. This is not by Dungeons and Dragons. It's by West End Games. This one uh, is also about a seventy dollar uh, box, assuming everything is uh, complete inside. But it does look like the stuff that we need is here. It's got all the cards. It's got all the uh, character sheets, nothing's written in. Uh, so fortunate for me that uh, looks like this stuff is um, you know, mostly complete. There's some split ends on the box and that'll take some of the value down. But uh, overall, you know, probably somewhere around, you know, 60, 70 bucks for this box. Uh, this one here, uh, if, you know, if you see this name, Gary Gygax, by the way, you should pay a lot of attention to that. That name is uh, very big in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, like you could see here, Gary Gygax. And you could see over here, uh, Gary Gygax. Uh, name is also cool as hell. So just remember it for that reason. But uh, he has a book called Chainmail, for example, from 1971 that uh, will easily sell for $1,000 if you find it. So write that down. It's a small little yellow book called Chainmail. Uh, this one here, um, you know, depends on completeness, but it looks like, again, uh, we're fortunate with having um, the materials here. I mean, it's got the race book and it's got the... Uh, maps and you know everything that you would seems like you need is all in here so this will go for anywhere from like maybe 35 to 60 dollars again depending on uh, condition and completeness so uh, cool to find uh, to find that one here and then this one here I don't know I didn't look this one up. Uh, to Hell and Back, Realms of Fantasy. Uh, it is a Dungeons and Dragons uh, associated game here. So that's cool. I'm gonna look this one up and I'll uh, get back to you on this one here. Okay, this one is not worth as much as the other ones. It's about $30 or so. But you know what? All these 30 bucks, 20 bucks, they all add up. They can't all be worth seventy dollars. So uh, I'll take three worth about seventy and one for for thirty. That works for me. Uh, then there's some other ones we're pulling out here. These thin little uh, modules to play the game, uh, especially these early ones from uh, 1981. Like you could see, this one here is sold for as high as eighty-five dollars and routinely sells for around fifty bucks. So. You know, and, and look how thin this is. I mean, this is nice and light, easy to ship. I mean, you technically could ship it out media mail if you want to, but uh, you could also ship it out first class. The point is that this is not expensive stuff to ship and it doesn't take a lot of time. That's one of the things I love about this Dungeons and Dragons stuff. Uh, and you will come across it sometimes at garage sales, uh, little pieces here and there. Uh, this one here, this uh, old TSR one uh, from, 19, it's from the early 1980s. Uh, uh, let's see here, we're in 1981 again. This one, again, routinely around about a $50 uh, book for, for, for this one right here. Again, nice and nice and thin. Don't worry about the wear, and the reason why you don't have to worry too much about it is just so hard to find. People don't care too much about the wear. Uh, some of these that I'm finding, uh, let me just put this little pile over here. Uh, some of these that I'm finding are coverless, and so I will try to find matching covers because there are some loose covers around and so I'll just try to match them up. So, uh, and even so, even if I can't match it up, uh, some people may just buy some of these without the cover. So we'll just have to see. Okay, now you can see here, this one is uh, a more modern one. Uh, you could see the difference between uh, some of those older uh, sets, just in terms of the type of uh, art that was used, for example, you know, here being the older one and just, you know, not a fancy uh, type of font that's used on the top, whereas here, you know, we're more uh, fancy and formal and everything. Uh, back here, you're going to see there's an old uh, UPC with the original price on it of uh, 25 bucks, whereas, you know, you're not going to see anything like that. There's no UPCs here. There's no original prices, nothing like that. So, I don't know. I'm going to have to look this up to figure out what it currently goes for. There's some inserts uh, here in terms of uh, 
uh, manuals. They, you know, looks like whatever needs to be here is here. Looks nice and shiny and glossy inside. So I think we're good on that one. Uh, here we're getting to a little bit more older uh, types of books. And anytime, by the way, just a little hint, anytime you see anything that says handbook on it, uh, you want to pick up any handbooks because handbooks are what you need to play these games. So, uh, you know, pick them up and they're going to sell very, very easily. I mean, you can see here we've got uh, some color pictures inside. Uh, you know, we've got the monsters. Uh, it's just really amazing. So uh, I'm not sure what year this one is from. Let's see here. This one we've got from 94. So it's not super old. You know, uh, unfortunately, we've got a bad stain here. So uh, that course is, well, it's on the first few pages here. So that is definitely going to affect value. So I'll have to see what I wound up doing with that one. So I don't know. But um, fortunately, that's on one of the newer books. I would be more bummed out if that was on one of the ones from the 70s or the 80s. Uh, and these here, like this Dragonlance book, I love old Dragonlance. I, I know Dragonlance very well. I've read uh, Dragonlance uh, a ton when I was a kid. Uh, and I probably had this one at some point. Uh, it's funny to see it. Now, usually when you find these old Dragonlance books, they're worth a lot of money. There's one called uh, Leaves from the Inn of the Last Home that if you find that, you definitely want to pick it up. There's a Dragonlance uh, Atlas that's worth a lot of money. This one actually isn't worth that much. Uh, maybe like 15 bucks or something like that. Uh, so I might actually just hang on to this one because I just love Dragonlance stuff. But um, there's a lot of other older Dragonlance uh uh, adventures here like we've got Twilight Calling we've got uh, Scarta's Mirror and you know each one of these could be you know 50 bucks 30 bucks you know some could go higher um, uh, this one here I'm not sure what this one is uh, it's looks like something that's played in associations with advanced uh, D&D but uh, it's not actually made by them it's made by this uh, uh, other company here called Roll Aids, which is kind of a weird name because you think of Roll Aids, the actual, uh, you know, pill that you use for <laughs> gastrointestinal problems. So uh, I, those tend to be worth less than the ones that are actually made by a TSR, which you could see here, we've got TSR. So if you find the TSR ones, you know, these are worth much more money. So now this one says uh, UK1 up top and uh, you know, someone might think that's related to England, but uh, it's actually just uh, one of the module uh, codes. That's all. It, it's not anything related to England. But uh, I'll uh, just as an aside, just look this one up. We'll get a quick value on it. And I'll get back to you in a second. Yeah, so this has uh, sold twice uh, recently uh, for 35 bucks. So uh, this is what I mean. You know, th there's a lot of them here because they're so thin, but they, they do add up. I mean, there's just... Uh, you know, the more the merrier for me. Now, here's a Dragonlance book uh, one, so that's cool. Um, but it looks like it's a loose cover, so I'm gonna have to figure out which one this goes to. Is it this one over here? Um, nope, it's not this one, I don't know. So I'm gonna have to look for uh, Dragons of Despair. Hopefully that is loose somewhere. Tracy Hickman uh, wrote a lot of the Dragonlance books with Margaret Weiss. So if you ever see that pair, Margaret Weiss, Tracy Hickman, pick up their items because it tends to have value. So jot those names down. Uh, this one here is loose. So I'm gonna have to figure out what this one goes to. Here again, we've got another loose cover. So hopefully those things are sitting around wherever they, whatever they go to. I don't know what the heck this is. This is does have a rip on it, whatever it is. Let's see if we could open it up and figure out what we have got here. Hold on. We've got, uh, oh, it's one of the Ravenloft uh, items. So it goes to Mask of the Red Death. So I'm gonna have to see if we have that. Uh, I don't remember that, but maybe that's in there in the Ravenloft uh, items and I will insert that in there. All right, so I just looked through all these Ravenloft titles and I cannot find the book that goes with this map. So I'm just gonna keep the map over here. 
and hopefully later it'll turn up in one of the other boxes. Now, Mrs. Primetime is just pulling out a bunch more of these uh, soft cover books here. We've got an older Dragonlance one here. Uh, this one is uh, not as old. It's from 1990. This would be about a $25 book, but you know, still not bad. I mean, 25 bucks, 25 bucks. Uh, you know, I really prefer to find these uh, older ones here, like these ones from uh, 1983 or 1984 that I showed you before, or 1979. Uh, those are the ones that really get me excited. But uh, I always get excited when I see Dragonlance just because of my own history with that series. So I, I do love it, and it's, uh, you know, it's cool that this would be a, probably around a $25 piece. Um, Forgotten Realms is another kind of branch off of Dungeons & Dragons. Doesn't tend to be worth as much as some of the other series that are uh, split off from it, but um, still, it does have value and it does have a loyal following. And so, you know, just depending on uh, scarcity and condition will affect uh, the values of, uh, of those of those books. So we'll just, you know, look these all up individually at a later time. I can't do that all here. Now this is cool. This one here looks to be uh, probably the oldest uh, book I have so far with the Ravenloft title in it. Let's look inside and see how old this book is. Uh, let's see if we can find a date here somewhere. Uh, here we go. Uh, 1986. Now it's uh, separated, but that's okay. Again, it's not a big deal. It still has these character sheets in here. Uh, a little bit of uh, pencil marking. And you know, the cool thing about people who play Dungeons and Dragons is that when they make marks, they tend to make them in pencil. And that's good because when you sell this, people know they could erase it. And so uh, that uh, helps resell it. Now I'm gonna look this one up because I'm curious. Hang on a second. All right, well, just as I figured, this one definitely has higher value. This one has recently sold for around $75. If it was brand new, it would sell for 100, easy. But uh, I hope I'm opening a whole new world uh, for many of you who are watching this who had no knowledge at all about anything related to Dungeons and Dragons and TSR, there you go again. TSR. I've mentioned this so many times in my videos, but this is why the value is crazy in these things. Um, this one here, Dark Sun, I don't know. Um, I'll have to look it up later. So what we have left to do here is there is a bunch of other books in here. So let's pull these out. Some I could tell the titles on the side, some I can't. So let's just go through them and see what we have here. Uh, let's just start uh, working this way and we'll just pull out little stacks and look through them together. Uh, I have not pre-checked these so uh, we'll be looking at them together for the first time. Uh, this one here, uh, it's a, a more modern one but the great thing about it is the condition is really nice on it. Uh, doesn't look to be like there's any significant damage. Um, if we look here at the original uh, Manufacturer suggested retail price of $30. Uh, that's good. So hopefully it has some uh, resale value to it. Just a quick check inside. And uh, looks like everything's okay. No rip pages, no stains, nothing like that. So that's good. I mean, we really only had one book so far with like a big stain issue on it. So not bad. Uh, this one here. Uh, now you see this like crinkling that we have here. That is from moisture exposure. That's what causes that. Now, depending on how old the book is, and this one looks like an older one, uh, the value will, there will still be value in it. It'll be less because of all this crinkling. Uh, that definitely does affect it. And sometimes that causes a smell inside of the book. So uh, this definitely is gonna affect value. Uh, in terms of the age on this one, uh, what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with a 1990s book, so um, not going to be worth a ton most likely because of that. But, you know, you can't hit a home run on every single one of them and you're going to have condition issues when you buy big lots on some of the books. So that's just how it is. This is part of, uh, part of the game. That's part of buying big lots is that you're going to get things that are worth high value and you're also going to get things that are low value. 
this one here is a hardcover book and it's part of the Ravenloft series. So the good thing about that is I'll just move that over with all this other Ravenloft stuff. So we're creating these uh, little mini sections. Uh, this one does not have any issues uh, looks with regards to any uh, stains or moisture exposure. There's no page crinkling. Everything looks nice and solid with this one. Uh, in terms of a date on this one, uh, I'm trying to find it. It looks like it's probably something in the 90s. I don't know. It's uh, It's got to be here somewhere. Um, maybe on another page because it is Wizards of the Coast and that's like a 1990s uh, company. So I'm not sure. I'll look it up later and we'll figure it out. Um, let's see, uh, look at this. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. We just got a whole bunch more of these things. I mean, this is just crazy. All these old TSRs, um, I, I just cannot believe it. Like this, you could just tell from the, you know, from the front that this is a 1980s book. Uh, that will find it right over here somewhere. Uh, yeah, so we're dealing with 1985 or 86 probably. Uh, let's see, that's like a little blurry. Uh, so it looks like that is 1985. Awesome. Um, it does have this person's name on top sometimes. You know, people would label these things once in a while with their names on it. But if that's the only issue you're going to have on is a name, it's not going to matter. They're so difficult to find sometimes that uh, people are just gonna buy it. So uh, we've got another one here. This is the uh, Forgotten Realms uh, series. So uh, like I said, not worth as much as some of the others, but uh, this is uh, looks like an older uh, book. So I don't know, maybe it'll, uh, you know, if, if we could get it into the 80s, that will help us. Anything in the 80s is what I'm looking for. So we've got a 1989. We've got some condition issues with it, but uh, you know, still, that's to be expected with a lot of these books. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, players didn't always keep their books in the greatest of condition. It just depends on the person. This is a loose one, uh, Dragons of Despair, and that reminds me, we had the Dragons of Despair cover earlier. And I remember I saw that, so let me, look back here uh i could have sworn we had i know we had it it's not that i could have sworn i know we had that dragons of despair um uh cover here somewhere let's see if i can find it where is it dragons of this here it is perfect so now i could take this and i could put this inside and now we've got the dragons of despair set awesome so put that over there. So we've got some more of these old modules here. Um, you know, again, I'm saying these could be anywhere from, uh, on average with these, looks like like 20 to 70 bucks uh, per book. So uh, there's another one here. Don't know the value on it. I'm gonna have to do research on these things. Now, by the way, with books like these, these are the types of things that you want to just piece them out. Unless you had something in here that just wasn't worth anything, then maybe you could lot it together with something similar. But if you really, really wanna maximize your value on collections like these, which is what I do all the time, um, piecing them out is the way to go with these books because again, they don't cost a lot of money to ship and people are searching for specific titles. If you want to just flip them real fast and lot them together, you know, you could do that. But if you have the patience, uh, patience is really a virtue when it comes to reselling because you will make a lot of money doing it that way. So I'm going to grab another stack here. We'll go through it. Uh, this one here is an Indiana Jones book. Uh, now, I recently um, sold some Indiana Jones TSR books, and this one is not made by TSR. Uh, I'm not sure what exact company makes it, but if it was TSR, I would say it on the front. Uh, it's West End Games. We came across that before. It's from the 1990s, uh, so I'm not sure exactly uh, how, how well this one's going to do. It has some minor, minor condition issues, but... Indiana Jones does sell well in the role-playing community, so I'm hopeful on this one that, uh, you know, th this one will sell. So, um, oops, actually, that's my Ravenloft pile, so let me put this over here because that just reminded me when I saw this one below, we have another Ravenloft book, so we'll put that over here. 
We've got um, another Dungeons and Dragons, but this is a, one of these loose covers. So I'm just gonna put this with the loose ones and hopefully we find something that matches up to that later. And here we've got a loose book and it's a Star Wars one. And the old Star Wars role-playing games uh, do very well too. Uh, unfortunately, this one does not have the cover on it. Uh, it's by West End Games and it is in 1991. If it was from 1980s, I'd be more excited about it, but I'm just gonna put this to the side. Hopefully we find it later. This type of thing, again, just gets me much more excited. You know, you see this old art on here, the way they did this. Uh, this is just, just, it's just great. I just, you know, 1981 TSR, it's just, I've said it over and over again, but uh, this is the stuff that makes me excited. You know, you talk about trying to, you know, develop a good eye for things. You've got to recognize the kind of art you're looking at here. Like, see this and how you've got to notice how different this is versus this type of art. You know, this is just, you could just tell it's more modern art. You know, this type of old school art, the way they used to draw, the way they used to ink things, they just don't do it like that anymore. And so when you see that, it's hard to describe it, but when you see it, you've just got to get an eye for it over time and you'll be naturally drawn towards it uh, when you go to sales and you see things and you know, in rummage sales or, or garage sales, and it'll cause you to investigate them more, and you'll start uh, picking up things that uh, have a lot of value to them once you could just develop that eye. Uh, this one here, Mansion of Shadows, have no clue. Uh, looks more modern, so we'll have to look that up later. Uh, werewolf the Apocalypse. Now, this is cool. That's a, a, a werewolf a claw rip through the front cover, which is pretty neat. Um, it does have a little bit of warping uh, to it right here, as you can see. So that is from some moisture exposure. I'm not sure how uh, well these were protected in the storage unit. So it looks like, you know, moisture got to some of these things. So, you know, we'll look it up. We'll figure, ooh, look at this. This is a hardcover Raiders of the Lost Ark source book. That is really cool. So I've not seen this one before and the condition looks good. I don't see any stains or anything like that. Um, it's 1994, so let's look this one up and I'll tell you what the value is on it. Okay, so the max value on this one is gonna be around $25. Now there are some of these that were up for sale but did not sell. So it's just gonna depend on the marketplace at the particular time you list it. The cheapest you could find it now is for around 25 bucks. Uh, it doesn't have any watchers on it though. And so, you know, the issue with this is that it's 1990s. If it was 1980s, you wouldn't have that issue. But 1990s, that's what affects things. It's not considered vintage enough yet. That's the problem. Uh, at some point it will, but right now it's not. So this is where I would use a strategy of combining these two together because if you figure, you know, how much profit there's going to be in this whole collection and how much I wound up getting everything, um, you know, per individual item, it doesn't mean much to me at all to just combine these two things together. Like it doesn't affect my bottom line much uh, and it's going to add value to the prospective uh, buyers. So if they're looking at two of these, because there's two of them up right now for around $25 and I've got one that I could just toss Indiana Jones in there and then I could make the price $29.99, guess who's gonna make the sale? Me. And so that's the advantage of buying in lots like this. This is how you, uh, you know, how you could really, um, you know, beat your competition is by uh, adding value like that and it doesn't really mean too much to you because, you know, again, you don't have uh, too much invested in each individual uh, item, especially once you've made your money back on it, you care even uh, less about, you know, doing a toss in like that. All right, so let's get back over here and grab another handful of stuff and see what we've got. My gosh, this box is so heavy. Uh, okay, so we've got a wizard's handbook. I told you anytime you see these handbooks, definitely pick them up. So it's good to see. We've got some more Ravenloft, so we're gonna add that to our Ravenloft pile. I should probably make a Forgotten Realms pile. I'm gonna do that um, later once I shut the video off because we've definitely got enough to make a Forgotten Realms pile, so uh, we'll do that later. 
Uh, okay, good. Uh, we've got another uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, Master's Guide. So that's cool. Um, now I could feel that it feels um, warped and you could see here we've got some mold damage here on this book. So unfortunately, yeah, when you've got this kind of stuff in here, this is uh, gonna really affect value. And so that's a bummer uh, to see that in there. That's all gonna have to be disclosed. Oh, look at that right there. Um, it's just really, really gross. So is someone gonna want it? I don't know. I'd really have to lower the price on it to, uh, to get this one to sell. So that really is a bummer. It is from 1979, I mean, it's old enough that there is someone out there who may want it, but uh, that's gonna take it down from being like what could be like a $70 book to like, you know, maybe something in like the 20 to $30 range or something like that. So not that it's totally worthless, but you know, mold like that really affects condition and, um, and value. All right, so let's see. We've got a uh, Path of the uh, Magi here. So this is a hardcover book, uh, looks like a more modern one. Not sure exactly what the value is of it, so I'll have to look that up later. And we've got another Indiana Jones book, which is probably from the 1990s again, so I'll uh, look into that here. You can kind of tell, you can almost tell if it's 90s, let's see. Uh, yeah, see here, we've got 1996. So that's just gonna be lumped together with the other Indiana Jones books over here. So just toss that there. Uh, I've got a Dragons and Gods book, uh, it's thick. I don't know right now what the value of it is. I'd have to look this one up. So I'm gonna move over here and we've got some more uh, hard covers. So, oh my God, these are so heavy. Okay, uh, Serpent Kingdoms, cool cover, uh, Forgotten Realms, hardcover. Hardcovers are, are good, I like to see hardcovers. So I'm not sure what the value of this one is. Uh, I'm kind of curious, so I'm gonna look it up and I will tell you in just a second. All right, so I looked this up. A few of them recently have sold for $30, so that's good. Now it does have a little bit of a bend here. You can see that right there. That is also caused by moisture. Uh, so you wanna look inside and make sure that the pages are not crinkled. And the good thing is none of them are crinkled. So that is uh, good. And so you could just uh, you know, disclose this or even you could just put some books on this uh, for a little bit to flatten it down and make it a little more straight. Uh, a little corner blunting there, but overall, this will be a resellable book, so I'm glad about that. Uh, the Monster Manual or the Monstrous Manual, uh, those are always good to find. Uh, a little bit of staining on top. Hopefully, we don't have uh, too many stains inside. Let's see. Uh, whew. Okay, because those uh, some of those other books were pretty gross. This is really cool. I had uh, one like this when I was younger. It was in a binder. A lot of these monstrous um, uh, manuals came in binders. And uh, this one, though, is a hardcover book. I wonder, in terms of the year, if this goes into the 80s. Let's see. Uh, it would be nice if it did. Nope, it's 1993. So, okay. Um, I'll look this one up, see what this one's worth, too. All right, so max value on this one is gonna be around $35, $40. This will wipe off easily. You could wipe them off the hardcovers like this on the front. It's just when you have uh, that kind of staining on these inside parts of the book and on the pages, that's where you really can't wipe it off. So, But on the front cover, we get that off no problem. All right, let's see. Um, the Dungeons and Dragons Player's Handbook. Again, another handbook, so this is great, uh, nice, Really strong, sturdy, hardcover book. Let's check it out inside. Uh, it's You can hear there's like a little stickiness sound to it, at least when I initially opened it up. So you hear that? So there's a little bit of old, uh, uh, you could see there, there's some crinkling, a little bit of moisture uh, on it. You could hear that when you open it. So that's the kind of thing you need to disclose. Will someone still buy this? Yes. Uh, but, you know, you got to make the appropriate disclosure so when the person gets it, they're not really upset that there's some 
uh, staining and discoloration on the uh, inner panels and stuff. But this will still sell. Uh, Forgotten Realms, we'll add that to the Forgotten Realms pile. It's a hardcover book. And then here, it looks like we've got some kind of um, map or something from a game. I'm not exactly sure uh, which one this went to. We have to open up inside. And let's see what we've got here. Uh, this goes to Metroscape. I don't know. Haven't heard of that before. So I'm uh, just going to keep it to the side and hopefully maybe later we'll find what this goes to. Uh, what do we got here? Um, got some more stuff. I see some Star Wars in there. Uh, this is interesting. This is this one looks old. Um, I don't know. Is this... Let's go back to the 70s, this one. Monstrous, this is an old Monstrous Compendium. Let me get the first one out here, hold on. So, you know, I've seen many of these. I even have one upstairs. I have the binder upstairs, just as my own personal collection. I have the binder. Um, but I have never actually seen this original version because you can see here, this one says second edition. But this is really neat. I wonder what year this goes back to. Let's see. I'm hoping we're in the 80s. we got to be in the 80s on, on this. Let's see. Oh, come on. Where are we? Where are we? Let's get to that page where we've got the uh, copyright on there so we can see what year this dates back to. Darn it. Why isn't it saying? Maybe, oh, maybe there's another. I think there's another page here I might be missing. Nope. I'm not. Maybe it's on the back. Let's see. It's on the back somewhere? Uh, t -t 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 yes. 1994. 94, not 84. Well, I'm a little surprised. It kind of looked 80-ish to me. Didn't it look like that to you? Uh, I'm going to still look it up, though. I'm curious what this is worth now. Yeah, you see that 90s date on it really just uh, takes the value down. So that puts this at about a $25 book. So, you know, not that I'm going to complain about 25 bucks, but I'm just saying uh, it does uh, does take the value down when it's 90s compared to 80s. Like this one here, this looks like an 80s one. So let's see here. There's no way this is 90s. Uh, where are we here in terms of date? It's got to be inside here then. Um, where are we? Right over here, yeah, see, we're 1987. One of the ways you could tell is that those 80s books, um, they had these module numbers and stuff right up top. So, uh, you know, so you could look uh, at that and you could make a quick determination that's probably 80s uh, without even looking inside. But like as an example, like I'm gonna look this one up and I'll tell you the value of this one. All right, well, this just goes to show that uh, <laughs> there's always exceptions to things. Cause this one, while it is worth a little bit more, I mean like maybe 28, something like that. Um, you know, whereas this would be like a $25 one. It's not a significant increase, but as a general rule of thumb, the 1980s books are worth uh, much more than the 1990s ones. You know, there's exceptions. Um, those are pretty similar though, in terms of price. Uh, here we go. We've got some more uh, thin, uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons uh, games. Uh, Gary Gygax, good sign on this one. Uh, so since this is a Gary Gygax one, I'm gonna look this up and uh, we'll see what this one's worth. All right, well, we've got a max of about $30 on this one. So, uh, you yeah, know, not bad. 30 bucks for a nice thin book like that. And uh, here we've got another one. So uh, there's just a lot of these just uh, piling it up. Uh, this is a more modern one. You could just tell from the, uh, not only from the uh, cover art, but you could also just tell from the condition. Uh, the older ones tend to get beat up more. Uh, so we've just got some more. I'm just gonna, you know, go through these. Ooh, this is cool. Um, the Veiled Society, David Cook. This one's probably early 80s. It's got a special cutout section. I uh, wonder if that's still, oh, uh, see? Now, this has a cutout section, but that cutout section is gone, so that's gonna uh, decrease the value. So I'm not even gonna look this one up right now since that's uh, since that piece is missing, unfortunately. And you gotta look at stuff like that. You gotta pay attention to 
what the book says. If the book says there's a poster inside, for example, you know, or a magazine says that, make sure you look to see if that's still in there. Uh, let's see, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Spelljammer. Queen of the Demon Web Pits. That sounds really cool. Look at that cover. Oh my gosh. Look at that art. I mean, that art is just amazing. I love the art in Dungeons and Dragons. And this is old. This is 1980, and I am looking this one up. I am excited about this one. Let's see. All right. Uh, a little bit more for this one. Max value of about 40. So uh, not bad. Let's see what else we've got here. Star Wars Essential Guide to the Characters. That's pretty cool, uh, but it looks like a modern book and it's published by Del Rey, which means it's probably overproduced. Uh, I haven't seen though uh, this one before, but I'm willing to bet that there's, uh, there's, a, there's probably a lot of these out there. It's probably a 90s book. Let's see. Take a look inside. Uh, okay, date, date, date. 1995 yeah so there's probably a million of these things out there so value on it is probably not too high uh, I'll look it up and I'll, I'll I'll show you I'll tell you what it's worth yeah so this book uh, as I suspected it, it's overproduced it um, you know it trends for about four bucks on eBay plus three dollars shipping so this is something I would either lot together with other books, you could sell in a garage sale, you could give it to someone you know who really loves Star Wars, that type of thing. So, um, cool book, but, you know, just goes to show you supply and demand is what's gonna drive the, uh, the prices on these things. And there's just a few more in here to grab. So let's see what else we've got. Uh, Dark Awakenings, Guardian, have no clue. Have to look that up. We've got a few more of these Dungeons and Dragons modules. Uh, there's another one here. I mean, this is nice. I mean, there's just so much money in this uh, container. It's crazy. Uh, we've got another one of these Dark Awakenings. I don't know in terms of the value. Uh, Dark Folk. I don't know. Uh, this is interesting. Um, it's by this Roll Aids company. Uh, looks like a magazine, basically. Um, uh, in a way, I mean, but it's actually a book. No, it is It is a book. It kind of had that magazine kind of feel to it. In terms of the age, it's 1983. So that's kind of interesting. Um, 1983 for this one. Let's look this one up, see what this one's worth. Yeah, probably around 15 bucks for this one. Uh, not worth as much. Uh, you know, really, that is just tied to the company here. Roll Aids um, and not being TSR. TSR is really crucial. Uh, here's this uh, another one of these spell jammer ones, but again we don't have a cover. And the last one is another one of these Dungeons and Dragons books here. So overall, uh, this has been an amazing unboxing. Uh, this is really, really, really cool. So uh, I'm gonna pack this stuff back up, and I'm gonna figure out a way to start processing this and getting this listed pretty soon because there's just a lot of value here I don't want just sitting around. So very interesting, very cool. And uh, I'll wrap this up in person with you in just a moment. All right, wow, that was fun. That was exciting to go through. I had an absolute blast. I mean, there is just so much money in that one box. It's crazy. So, uh, I mean, really, I I'm telling you, all my money is back and then some just from that box. I paid $450 for everything that you saw in my garage. So, um, and I've already made uh, over 50 of it back, made like $55 back just from selling four DVDs. And that's after taking out the shipping cost and the, um, uh, you know, the fees to PayPal and to eBay and all that stuff. So, uh, I'm just, I, I'm going to make my money back pretty quick from this. I'm real excited. And then to get into the profit range. So uh, some of those uh, Dungeons and Dragons books, they need to get up soon. So I plan to start listing those this week. If you saw anything in there that uh, jumped out to you, if you're really into Dungeons and Dragons that you love and you really want to have, reach out to me. Let me know. More than happy to sell it to you uh, privately and not even list it on eBay. So uh, just get in touch with me and uh, let me know. My email address is primetimetreasure at gmail.com. There's no underscores in that, just primetime treasure, no S at the end, or you could always just message me 
uh, in the YouTube channel, that's fine too. So hope you liked the video. If so, smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Also, uh, make sure that you come by the Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. That's my own group. The link is down below. <laughs> we'll end it off on a blooper, folks. Uh, that's, uh, oh my God, my tray's falling. So, uh, Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I will see you all back at the next video. For anyone wearing headphones, I'm probably gonna get yelled at for, uh, for keeping that in there. Uh, come to the Instagram uh, account, that's prime underscore time underscore treasure. See you at the next video, everyone. Take care.